Welcome back to another educational lesson on how to conduct statistics using SPSS. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about how to conduct one simple t test using SPSS. These lessons are brought to you by Significant Results. Significant Results is a small business of consultants who aim to translate data for researchers, students, and anyone engaging in statistics. Our motto is making sense of the world one number at a time. So feel free to reach out to us. Subscribe to the channel if you find these lectures to be educational and useful. Make sure to check out our Facebook page if you want to engage with other uh, individuals who are interested in statistics. And if you need additional help, make sure to visit our website for pricing and a list of the, the types of help we can provide. So for today's lesson, we're going to go over a brief outline. So I want to start off with a research example and talk about how to construct the research question and hypotheses, show you how to run analyses, show you how to interpret the results and calculate effect size, and then to produce a complete results that can be used for your data uh, reporting and publications. So here's an example. You have been asked to investigate whether company A's low fat ice cream is truly low fat. Right, so basically this company has been challenged regarding if their low fat ice cream is truly low fat ice cream. So based on the national standard, low fat ice cream is operationally defined as a number of calories per six ounce in an ice cream cone. So basically they're using an ice cream cone that weighs six ounces worth of ice cream as the way to, to define whether um, an ice cream is low fat. More so, the criteria is that within that six ounces of ice cream and the ice cream cone, the calorie count has to be less than 150 calories. So the national standard is that anything that is above 150 calories in a six ounce ice cream cone is not considered low fat. But anything less than 150 calories per six ounces of the ice cream cone is considered low fat ice cream. So here are your research questions that you constructed. Is there a difference in the number of calories between company A's ice cream and the standard for low fat ice cream, right? Remember the standard is anything that is less than 150 calories is going to be considered low fat ice cream. Anything above that will be considered um, not low fat ice cream. So you're no hypothesis is that there's no difference between the average number of calories between um, your ice cream or the company's ice cream and the ice cream that's set for the standard. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference between the average number of calories um, between company A's ice cream and the standard for low-fat ice cream. Okay, so the way we conduct this analysis is you go to analyze, compare means, one sample t-test. So this is our threshold, 150 calories, right? And this is our test variable. This is the variable that indicates our measurement of the calories of ice cream cones that were produced by company A. Always make sure to paste it. If you've watched my previous tutorials, you'll see that pasting it is a way to keep a log of what analysis you run. And also this code gives you the ability to share with your collaborators and anyone else who's involved in your research to know what you've run. Highlight the code and then push this green button and now you have your results. So this section is the descriptive part. So we know what the N is, 100 people were sampled. The average was 121 calories um, per ice cream cone. 
Uh, the standard deviation was 5.07, so very small. Standard error is very small, so this is a, a fairly good indicator that the data is representable of other ice cream cones. Okay. So, what people mostly want, mostly care about is that, is this statistically significant? Yes, it is. It's less than 0 0.001, so it's highly um, statistically significant. The mean difference is negative 28, and our confidence interval um, has that value within, and it's a very tight value, so we know that there's not a lot of distribution. Um, so this is a, a very good finding to have. Okay. So this is how the results would look. The average number of calories of company A's ice cream is less than the standard for low-fat ice cream by a mean of negative 28.40. This was the difference that I showed you earlier uh, with the confidence interval of negative 29.41 to negative 27.39, right? So our values fall within that range, right? If this was resampled over and over and over, our values would fall within these two values and we are confident that 95% of the time that would happen. More specifically, the average difference in the number of calories between company A's ice cream and a standard for low fat ice cream is statistically significant, right? So as we saw earlier, our p-value was less than 0 0.001. So that's this is some really robust findings, right? Um, but one thing that's missing is an effect size. So unfortunately, SPSS does not calculate effect sizes for you for one sample uh, t-test. So you have to do it by hand. And basically what you do is you take the standard deviation, which we plugged here as a denominator, and your numerator is going to be your mean difference. And this could be an absolute value, so positive or negative, it doesn't make a difference. You plug it in here. So mean difference, absolute value, divided by standard deviation, plug in these values here and you get 5.595 which will run you up to 5.6 as your Cohen's D. So remember your effect size is in regard to differences is the number of standard deviations away your sample mean is from your hypothesized population mean. So they're very different. Um, that's a good way to look at it and as far as distance. It's 5.6 standard deviations away from each other. As you can see, the mean difference is quite large, right? But the p-value also signifying that the probability of this finding occurring is highly unlikely. So all in all, this is the way that you would conduct a one sample t-test. This is the way you would report it and this is the way you would interpret the findings. Um, so again I really appreciate um, you all watching my tutorials. If you're a new person watching, uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to producing more tutorials for you all. Have a great day.